Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the barium meal. So in the last class we have already learnt about the in the barium meal we have already learnt about the indications of barium meal and contraindications of barium meal. Now let us now learn how to prepare a patient for barium meal. So preparations of barium meal before barium meal. Before barium meal the patient should not eat or drink. He should not eat or drink at least for 6 hours. At least for 6 hours before examination, he should not uh, drink or eat anything. Next, if the patient is going to go through this barium meal in the morning, we have to ask them to fast overnight that is he should not drink at least six hours before meal second he should stop smoking okay he should not smoke even before barium meal why because um if the patient smokes cigarette this cigarette will actually interfere with coating of barium so it interferes with barium coating over the mucosa so, if this cigarette will interfere with barium coating over the mucosa, so if this is the mucosa and this is the barium which should coat evenly over the mucosa. Okay. The main function of barium is it should coat uh, the mucosa evenly so that if there is any defect in the mucosa, over that position you will not see if there is defect here, okay, some polyp here, then the barium will not coat that, that part. So as a result, the defect can easily be visualized. But if there is, if the patient smokes cigarettes, then this cigarette smoking will interfere with this coating of the uh, mucosa. So as a result, um, the, there will be uneven coating of the barium. Cigarette smoking will, will not cause even coating of barium. There will be some uneven coating of barium. As a result, the study will not be proper. So, we should ask the patient to not to smoke before barium study. Then, in case of gastric outlet obstruction, if the patient has history of or if the patient has gastric outlet obstruction, then in these cases, one, definitely we should ask him to fasting, fasting for six months. That is not eating or drinking before for six months before study is necessary. But at the same time, we can also ask them to do prolonged fasting also. Okay. Or we can also give intravenous injections of metaclopramide can be given to the patient. And sometimes even nasogastric intubation. Sometimes nasogastric intubation or aspiration of contents is necessary. Nasogastric intubation and aspiration of contents is necessary for gastric outlet obstruction. Okay. So next uh, we have uh, we have to see the after preparation, the contrast media we will see. Some important points about contrast media. So, in the contrast media, for barium meal, the contrast media can be of two types. Like it's a, it's, it is definitely barium, but the study can be divided into two types. One, we have single contrast study. Second, we have double contrast study. We can do either a single contrast study or double contrast study can be done. Okay. First, in single contrast study. So, if you see for a single contrast study, we generally use, definitely we use barium. But here, we use a low density barium sulfate is used. The most commonly used volume, weight by volume ratio for barium sulfate for single contract study is 80 to 100 percent weight by volume of barium can be used. And even sometimes we can also use 30 percent weight by volume suspension can be used for high 
kilo volts single contrast study if you want a high kilo volts single contrast study then we can use a 30% weight by volume suspension can be used then one more important thing about single contrast study is if you suspect a gastrointestinal perforation especially here in this case if you uh, suspect a gastroduodenal perforation definitely we cannot use barium because of the risk of barium encephalopathy and barium irritation in the peritoneum so as a result we should use a water soluble contrast media is recommended for patient with gastroduodenal perforation so we have uh, uh, in case of gastroduodenal perforation it is better to use water soluble contrast media which are non ionic water soluble contrast media can be used then we have double contrast study in the double contrast study a high density here also we should use barium definitely but the barium should be high density barium should be used and that barium should have low viscosity it it has to have high density and it should have low viscosity barium should be used barium suspension should be used here high density is 250% weight by volume of barium so for this double contrast study we might require 100 to 150 ml of barium uh, suspension might be required to get required amount of required detail and for better mucosal coating we can use high density low viscosity barium sulfate the high density meaning 250% weight by volume and 100 to 150 ml of barium suspension should be used so now before we go into the actual procedure first we will see the differences between single contrast study barium study and also double contrast uh, barium meal study so if you see the single contrast study in single contrast study first fundus the fundus is seen has supine position fundus is seen in supine position in single contrast study whereas in double contrast study this fundus is erect oh sorry just a minute so if you see the single contrast picture so by this picture we can understand it actually so single contrast and this is for double contrast so first we will see fundus fundus in single contact contrast it is like supine position that means it looks as if this is the fundus this is the fundus of the stomach it looks as if the fundus is sleeping right it is sleeping okay so this is supine position of fundus similarly the fundus will be in erect it will be definitely erect with two views 90 degrees to each other so this is erect okay then if you see in the single contrast the body body in single contrast you can see it is erect this is the body of the stomach this is body so obviously body is erect whereas body here is actually supine here the body is supine with almost 60 degrees head and elevation it's something like the, it is in the 60 degrees it is supine but it is 60 degrees above with 60 degrees head and elevation so it is something like it is definitely supine but it is 60 degrees in, at an angle that is the main next we have pylorus and antrum 
in pylorus and antrum this is the pylorus and this is the antrum here you can say that it is in prone position that is in this position and in such a way that right side down right side down whereas antrum and pylorus in the double contrast it is in supine position as if it is sleeping it is in supine position like this but right side will be up this is right side is up here it is prone position it is almost in uh, prone position but right side will be down here this is right side which is down that is the main difference then d1 that is first part of duodenum and c loop of duodenum is also prone and right side up similarly this is also supine with right side up this is supine with right side up or prone with right side down d4 of duodenum this is actually supine again whereas in double contrast it is prone with right side up right side down this these three are something even which i am not sure about them these three if anyone have any idea about it it is better to comment in the comment section even i will learn so these three are the things which i am not sure but uh, fundus it is definitely in sleeping position whereas here you can see this erect nature of fundus similarly body it is very clear in single contrast you can see the erect that is standing like a body of stomach whereas in double contrast it is supine but it is almost 60 degrees at the angle to the supine supine is sleeping right it is 60 degrees to that angle but pylorus antrum d1 and c loop and d4 of duodenum these i am not sure about it so these are the differences between single contrast and double contrast then the actual actual mechanism of uh, single contrast and double contrast we will learn in our next class thank you